Deep in the heart of North Salem lies an area called Billionaire's Dirt Road, just 55 miles north of New York City. There, you will find mansions from Milwaukee Bucks co-owners Jamie Dynan and Wesley Edgens, hedge fund billionaire Glenn Dubin, and Bill Gates' daughter, Jen Gates, who has a $34 million, 146 acre castle. Here also lies the most powerful man in the world, this man is Larry Fink, the founder and CEO of the second largest institutional company in the world, BlackRock. Just look it up yourself. With $10 trillion in assets under management, BlackRock owns everything. They own major parts of Pfizer. They own parts of CNN and Fox, meaning they can effortlessly influence bipartisan information flow. They own major parts of Coke. They own major parts of Pepsi. BlackRock owns a majority share in all vaccine producers. They own much of Google, Apple, and as of recently, billions worth of Bitcoin. And unlike Vanguard, which is half a century old, Plus, just got a new CEO. BlackRock is a disruptor and is run by the person who founded it, Larry Fink. It would be like Henry Ford was still alive to run his company today. This isn't a conspiracy. You go to Yahoo Finance, you go to top holders of all these shareholding companies, and you see BlackRock and Vanguard at the top. Now that Donald Trump is in office and the bull run is back on, BlackRock is again making massive moves. Over the last month, BlackRock's 15th largest ETF saw inflows of 12,000 Bitcoin and 100,000 Bitcoin. That's 40 billion in Bitcoin they now control. And we're sure that they have bought more Bitcoin as we're posting this video now. Crypto is about disrupting the system. So what happens when all the Bitcoin is held by like six powerful people? That's the question we're gonna answer today. We are hearing from clients around the world about the need for crypto. I mean, when you think about, I think some of this rally is way beyond the rumor. I think the rally today is about a flight to quality, all the issues around the Israeli war now, global terrorism. And I think there's more people running into a flight to quality, whether that is in treasuries, gold or crypto, depending on how you think about it. Under Larry Fink's direction, BlackRock will change the world forever. I'm Isaiah McCall of 99 Bitcoins, and this is the most powerful man in the world that nobody knows. BlackRock's plans for the economy and crypto. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. BlackRock's the Orwellian big brother you didn't know existed. In 2008, BlackRock was the company that the US government hired to fix the housing crisis. The whole US government was dependent on Larry Fink and BlackRock. This gave Fink power other billionaires can only dream of. Over my career, I witnessed five or six different crises. Some of them were quite severe. All of them were financial in nature, whether it was maybe a high yield crisis or a dot-com crisis or the Thai crisis of, of 97, 98, real estate crises and the Great Recession crisis, they were all financial in nature. We were all able to mitigate these crises and reduce the severity through monetary policies. Fast forward to 2020, the pandemic hit. Another crisis, another chance for BlackRock to grab power. BlackRock was again assigned to bailout companies and they started with the companies that they owned. Conflict of interest? Definitely. These are just the top 10 holdings. The whole list, which the Fed has published on the New York Fed website, includes 794 companies. So yes, these are just the top 10 by holdings, but there are hundreds of other companies that could be part of the Fed's portfolio. Larry Fink didn't inherit his empire, however. He began like any regular Joe. The difference was his mindset defied the ordinary. Quote, Larry was obsessed with having control as described by those around him. Fink honed his craft on Wall Street and it was all uphill from there. He swiftly achieved legendary status, steering his company to over $1 billion in profit within a few short years. In the early 90s, Larry Fink would find his holy grail, Aladdin, the software titan of BlackRock. Armed with a network of 5,000 supercomputers, Aladdin is an AI system that dissects markets and conducts risk analysis with razor sharp precision. This system keeps BlackRock two steps ahead. After Aladdin, BlackRock's new plan for dominance was taking over cryptocurrency. Today, they are the go-to option on Wall Street and are the most recognizable brand in the ETF market. All this is great for the price of Bitcoin, but it has become obvious that while BlackRock flings open Bitcoin's gates to everyone, they also tighten their grip on something not meant to be controlled. What we mean by this is BlackRock is manipulating the Bitcoin markets. Many prominent voices are starting to point this out, like Edward Snowden, who was at this year's Bitcoin conference. It's reflecting the consequences of all of these winner-take-all dynamics. It is reflecting the boundless 
uh, ambition of these generations of princes. Uh, and it has left us with an unfair system, which means an unstable system. Why do I think all of this AI stuff is likely? Uh, the reason is that unfair systems uh, produce dissatisfaction and they're, therefore are hard to maintain. Well, the people who want to maintain them are those who benefit the most from them. In the current disequilibrium, they're the ones who have the most resources. They have the ability to influence the status quo the most. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep the top spinning for as long as possible uh, without letting it fall over and someone having to write it in a, a new stage, right? Instead of staying in the same game, even if it's good, uh, we don't want to leave it, we start a new round, right? Uh, we start a new game uh, with new rules. Did you also know BlackRock owns major shares of the top five Bitcoin miners? Rye Blockchain, Cypher Hut, Marathon Digital, Terra Wolf, who pops up on every major shareholder list? BlackRock and Vanguard. Now let's zoom out. BlackRock doesn't technically own this Bitcoin. They manage it for their customers. You buy buy Bitcoin from their ETF, it's technically yours, not theirs. Sounds fair, right? The problem is having this much Bitcoin under control has given Larry Fink and BlackRock four distinct advantages that will tilt the scales of how Bitcoin operates going forward. Here's how. One, selling your Bitcoin to BlackRock doesn't give it back. Even when the market had its reddest days over the summer and before Trump got in, BlackRock reported no ETF outflows. This means their customers strangely kept buying Bitcoin even though the entire market was selling it. At least this is what BlackRock wants you to believe. Our guess is a different part of the company is buying the Bitcoin back so it never actually hits the market. And with that Bitcoin, they can short the market as some have already pointed out. This leads us to number two market manipulation. Here's a conversation between Raul Powell and James of Invest Answers talking about the market manipulation that BlackRock is being accused of. But do you believe there are games happening behind the scenes with these ETFs? Market maker manipulation? Do these all these ETFs have the fully stacked wallets? Or do they wait a week to buy them on a dip, etc.? Because I did an analysis of this and there's at least four big instances where flows did not match price in a big way. There are ways of that they're doing order flows that don't mean open market buying. So there's there's ways around it. Look, I know most of the people who have built these ETF businesses, they're straight die. There's always somebody trying to make a price and take a price. There is no grand master plan for manipulation. Wait till the options come on these things and then it becomes more complicated. The more participants there are, the more complicated th that world becomes. I also think, you know, BlackRock and the Bitcoin options market, they can use it eventually to slow it down. And the reason that they would slow it down is so big players can buy. It's not like BlackRock is a benevolent Wall Street tyrant. They've been caught trying to manipulate the markets before. Lastly, it's clear that BlackRock knows how to capitalize on crypto. In their 2023 Global Outlook report, BlackRock said three trends will define the new era of investing. The first being aging populations will cause governments to increase debts and deficits, leading to higher inflation. The second was fractured trust between global superpowers, which will lead to proliferation of trade and currency wars, creating volatility. And the third, a digital economy, artificial intelligence, and automation, which will transform businesses, investments, and society in new and entirely uncontrollable chaotic ways. It's eerie to hear BlackRock talking like this. It seems more like an Alex Jones rant, but this is why BlackRock is more powerful than Vanguard. They've woken up and they've smelled the coffee. They know where the world is heading next. BlackRock is rebuilding Ukraine. One more quick story about the power and corruption of BlackRock. They're now also trying to take over Ukraine. A powerhouse coalition backed by BlackRock and JP Morgan is set to pull $15 billion to breathe life back into Ukraine. Named the Ukraine Development Fund, this new initiative will rally investors to tackle the massive rebuilding task after two relentless years of Russian aggression. Now, if you've heard of BlackRock, you've probably also heard of Blackstone, the company that is buying up all the real estate here in America. BlackRock was once part of Blackstone, and now they're making the same plays in Ukraine to buy up land. If you think they're doing this out of the kindness of their heart, they're not. We are John Perkins Great on, job, and John's job was to be an economic hitman. He would go to countries yep, who had right a here. lot of resources and he would say, hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come and build up a bunch of different things here for you. But this is what we're going to ask from you. You have to listen to everything we do. We'll bring jobs. We'll do this. We'll do that. We'll do this. We'll do that. If you don't, we'll kill you. That was his job, by the way. 
if you've never read his book or what he this guy's a democrat full-blown liberal on the other side basically in the end whatever is left of ukraine blackrock and whoever else will own it if you want to be extra cynical several foreign policy experts like jeffrey sachs and john mearsheimer believe we're only supporting ukraine because of financial influence that blackrock and the military industrial complex have don't believe us here's u.s senator lindsey graham saying exactly that. They're sitting on trillion dollars worth of minerals that could be good to our economy. So I want to keep helping our friends in Ukraine. If that isn't blackpilling enough, a claim emerged in Chinese and Russian media that BlackRock requested the Ukrainian government refrain from burying dead Ukrainian soldiers on farmland that they own. The claim was later proven false, but it still stands that BlackRock owns this country. As the famous science fiction writer Aldous Huxley concluded, one to the population can be easily hypnotized, another one third teeters on between being hypnotized and not at all, and the last third can never be hypnotized. In other words, we're not too bright of society. We constantly focus on surface level issues like the gender of James Bond or that the Super Bowl should be considered a national holiday. The average Americans like NFL games have been really great, haven't they? You know, guys at gas station counters will ask you and you're like, yeah, yeah, zombie, I wish you could talk about real issues. And a guy behind you is like, yeah, did you see UFC? The bigger problem isn't these superfluous issues, but the middle class is dying. And if you don't own any assets like crypto, tech stocks, gold, or digital pictures of apes, okay, scratch that last one, you are getting priced out of the economy. In fact, even the people who do own these assets are at the whims of the whales who control the reins like BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street. It's no longer a conspiracy to say a few companies do own everything and are able to spread their own narrative unilaterally. And anyone who questions that narrative is to be attacked. They are the other. More eyes need to be open to BlackRock and just how problematic it is to have two major investing firms pretty much control everything. Knowing the truth is vital. You can't afford to drift through life unaware of the puppet masters behind the curtain. And trust us, this rabbit hole goes much deeper. But until next time. Hey guys, we're trying to bring a lot more long form, high quality videos like this to the channel. So if you like these, please comment down below, like and subscribe, let us know so we can keep these going and so my boss doesn't fire me. And if you wanna check out more of the long form, high quality content we're trying to do, be sure to check out videos here, there, they're probably gonna pop up somewhere. So check those out, have a good day.